with you all tonight. And my name is Janet Recchia. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Syracuse University. I work in the Southern California office for our satellite center, which is in Sherman Oaks. And I'm also a graduate alum of Syracuse University from the College of Visual and Performing Arts. I have a BFA in illustration and I tracked in fashion illustration and was a fashion artist in New York City for about 17 years and then went on to be an art educator. Um, I'm also married to another SU alum that went on to being an animator for DreamWorks. So that's what brought me to Los Angeles and with you today. So I'm really happy to be with you. Um, I know a lot about the arts and I know a lot about the university too. And, and I'm here to share some tips for applying to our colleges. But if you would like to know more about our university, um, please put your camera over the QR code that's on the screen. And once you capture it, a link will come up and the link is timely, but it will bring you to our website and also put in any information that you want to learn about the university. This is preferably for students, for your students, put your student's name in there and, um, and also um, take note of my name. Um, and uh, if you want to reach out to me too, I could also put that in the chat at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to start the presentation of tips for applying to our colleges. So throughout this presentation, we're going to be discussing the tips of degrees offered and types of schools and colleges, types of majors and accreditation. So let's start off with the types of schools. So the types of schools that you are might be familiar with is first called the art school or the standalone school. Um, an example of that is the California Institute of the Arts, Art Center College of Art and Design, um, Otis College of Art and Design, Laguna, uh, California College of the Arts in San Francisco. These are colleges that are standalone art schools and have very little academics in them. And then we have schools art schools that are within a larger university. So in Syracuse University, the College of Visual and Performing Art is an example of that. It is a standalone school inside of an arts, inside of a research university. Uh, also DePaul has its own art school and um, New York, um, uh, NYU has the Tisch School of the Arts. They, there's many, many schools art schools within universities uh, that are like a standalone that offer the professional degrees. And then there's the conservatory and the conservatory do not offer any academics at all, unlike a school within a larger university and also the standalones which offer limited academics. But the conservatories are purely a professional degree and one of the most um, renowned ones is the Juilliard School, but also the New England School of Music, the Boston Conservatory. There's many um, conservatories out there. Usually also they have a cut program. And then last but not least is your vocational schools, which are maybe your two-year degrees, your technical schools, and some proprietary schools that offer also four-year degrees. But these are the various types of institutions that offer major degrees and are focused paths. So um, four-year degrees are usually offered in the standalone schools um, and also the schools within a larger university and also the conservatory. And um, for the most part, the level of instruction of these, all these schools is the best you can get. Art schools within a university that are conservatory-based, they have a professional and a liberal arts degree plus a general education. So you really get that. We're gonna break that down a little bit more. Um, and like I said before, in the conservatory, though conservatories tend to be more expensive, they do offer general, generous scholarships to talented students. But like I said, there's a cut system and there's no academics. So here are the types of degrees that are given out by some of those schools. So the, um, 
The most popular degree is the Bachelor of Fine Arts, the BFA, or the BM, the Bachelor of Music. The BFA is usually within the performing uh, theater arts and also the visual arts, and the BM is the music. These are highly structured, specialized, progression-based curriculums. The focus is more towards the studies in the major studio coursework. It breaks down to two-thirds of the overall curriculum is dedicated to the professional path of that major. And then one-third is actually in the academics or the liberal arts. So it is professionally heavy in two-thirds. It is more hands-on. Uh, it's more production to practice. There is a definite professional focus. And most art design skills, conservatories, conservatory style programs like uh, the art schools within universities at traditional schools have these programs. And then you have the BA. There is more of a flex flexible curriculum structure. It's easier to double major in a BA and room for exploration before declaring a major. There is more academic focus. Here's the big difference. Um, there's more liberal arts heavy. Um, there is less focus on the professional path, but this might be good for somebody that might be going into museum studies or maybe for art education where they want more um, academic focus. Two thirds of that curriculum will be in the liberal arts. One third of that curriculum will be in the studio arts. Um, traditional colleges and universities offer this. So are you looking to go into something special or study something more broadly? There are many different varied majors within visual and performing arts. You might want to ask the college that you're looking into, the conservatory or the standalone, um, what degrees, what majors, and how about the curriculum? Because even similarly named programs may focus on different skills on topics depending on the school. So also ask yourself, what have you done so far and what work do you want to do moving forward? So beware of a school's accreditation status. And this is very important because if you decide to transfer from a school that you might be unhappy with and find out that they're not accredited, those credits might not transfer over to the other school. And that could be a big waste of money. So you wanna make sure when you're looking at the schools, ask about their accreditation. Now, um, very um, popular is the NASAD accreditation. This is popular with the visual arts schools. And it is all of these accreditations actually are rigorous accreditations to get, and they are checked by the accrediting organizations. NASAD will come into the schools, visit them, the classrooms, see the quality of work, and they are um, you know, judged on if they're following all the requirements, if they could pass through for another year of being NASAD accredited. So when they have to go through this rigorous requirements, you know that they are a, a, a very good school um, to learn your professional practice in. Um, that would be NASAD for the visual arts schools that would also include film, National Association of Schools of Art and Design, National Association of Schools of Music is NASM, National Association of Schools of Theater is NAST, and National Association of Schools of Dance is NASD. Now we're going to break this up into three sections. I'm going to first talk about visual arts of uh, art, design, and transmedia. Then we're gonna go into performing arts, music, and dance. Lastly, performing arts, theater. So when it comes to the visual arts, it's all about the portfolio. Um, most art schools require students to submit a portfolio in addition to the transcripts, the SAT and ACT scores, the college essay, but Right now, most schools and most art schools are test optional to begin with, but this is what we call the art supplement. So when you're looking at a school and they're asking for an art supplement, 
in addition to all of the grades, that is the portfolio. Portfolios are a way for admissions counselors and the faculty members to view the student's thought process and how they interpret the ideas and they visually present them on a 2D or even a 3D plane if they're going into a 3D practice like sculpture, um, jewelry, uh, metal smithing, um, it could be ceramics. Portfolios should demonstrate knowledge of the color theory, composition, and should always be cohesive in nature. The typical requirements for a portfolio might include observational drawing. Now, observational drawing is not drawing from a photograph, it's drawing from life. Um, drawing from life, you could be drawing a figure drawing, a still life, from something in front of you, an animal drawing, a head drawing, um, a landscape drawing, going outside and draw a landscape. Not from photographs. Observational drawings are done from life. And then there's examples of 2D work. It could be digital, it could be drawings, it could be paintings, et cetera. And then 3D work for those who are going into the 3D world, like sculpture and ceramics and metal smithing, jewelry smithing. And then work from a student's area of interest is important. Um, an animation, it could be a demo reel. And then for uh, others, there could be illustrations and paintings, but they're done from a personal area of interest. So it's your personal interest section. And most importantly, like I said in the beginning, observational drawing, should, you should never draw from a photograph. It should be totally avoided for a college portfolio. Uh, admissions fac faculty that look at portfolio, they know immediately they can tell if it's drawn from a photograph. A, you know, there are exceptions to the rule, like using your photograph, but I would try to avoid that. Um, students have in the past used things from the internet that have been used again and again, so they do recognize things like that. So I would um, definitely stay away and avoid that for your college portfolio. Portfolios should show diversity in techniques in a variety of subject matter. You can show work in mediums such as oil, photography, pastels, and black and white color, or even both. Um, class assignments, independent projects, which express your personal ideas and concepts and show process are definitely good to put in your portfolio. Most schools will ask students to submit between 10 and 20 pieces through their websites, slide room, allowing students to upload their work. And some may have the opportunity to present their portfolio in person on campus or at off-campus events known as portfolio days. Slide room is almost always preferred and a link is always provided on the school application. And there are some schools that will allow students to provide a URL such as Coraflot or Behance. One thing is if you are showing your portfolio in person, but even photographing your, your portfolio, make sure it's clean and organized. You can see smudges and rips on, on drawings um, when you photograph them. Protect that work. Make sure you package, package it right and it doesn't uh, interfere with the viewing of that artwork. Never roll up your artwork. Avoid loose sheets of paper between pieces because sometimes they'll roll around and they'll smear the pieces. If you choose to mount or mat your work, which really is not required, use only neutral gray tones, black or white, and um, spray fixative on those pastel or charcoal drawings. And if you're showing your work in person, make sure you always label each piece with your name, address, and high school, because in case you leave one behind. And it's acceptable to show your work on an iPad, but not really acceptable on an iPhone. Um, bigger, the better. You actually are doing yourself uh, um, injustice by showing it on an iPhone. It's very small and it really does skew the image. So when it comes to performing arts, we're gonna talk about dance and music for the first section here. The performing arts requires all of its practitioners, whether they're singers, musicians, or dancers, a certain amount of physical activity. So the audition measures not only the student's creative and expressive facility, but 
also the level of the skill that's acquired. So dance conditions can include a class in ballet, modern, or even jazz, depending on the school, and usually followed up by a solo presentation. And then music auditions can include <clears throat> performance ability, understanding of major, of the minor scales and ear training, and the ability to sight read. So when you're auditioning for music, it's ideally for vocal measures, you should prepare at least two pieces in contrasting styles, operatic, show music, art song repertoires, and memorize each piece. Instrumentalists should be prepared to play scales, arpeggios, at least one etude and technical study, and also a solo work. It's not necessary to memorize as sight reading is usually required. And if you're performing music that is sight read, look the piece over entirely to acquaint yourself with keys and the time signatures. Singers should bring the appropriate accompanist unless noted otherwise. Most of the time singers do not have to bring an accompanist because they usually have someone there waiting for you unless you are videotaping it yourself and sending it in. <clears throat> Practice in front of many folks as possible. This will take your nerves away and it will make you feel more confident. And apply to at least three schools as music programs. They will vary in degree of competitiveness. So for auditions and dance, like other auditions, dance auditions will vary from institution to institution. So you always need to check that website. Some schools may hold a full class for example, a ballet, modern, or jazz, and then they'll follow it by the student performing a personal solo piece. Other schools may require a personal piece, and then they'll evaluate the student's execution. Faculty look for things like rhythm, coordination, body structure, and the potential to learn and complete the curriculum. When it comes to theater and performing arts, Auditions can include two contrasting monologues for acting and a resume and portfolio of their work. Only schools that offer a BFA in theater will require students to pre-screen first, and then they will audition for the entry in the program. Pre-screening often happens around November 1st, it's due. And if you pass through those pre the pre-screen, then you can go into the entry for the second audition and schedule that. Musical theater will require, in addition to the above two musical selections, one up-tempo, one ballad, as well as a dance movement sequence. And the requirements for both academic and artistic can differ drastically from program to program, but please check the website, note all the requirements. Art-specific requirements may include a resume, recommendation letters, video and auto, pre-screenings and writing samples, photographs, headshots, portfolios. And some requirements can also be uploaded as part of the main application and others will need it to be uploaded separately or sometimes even mailed in. So theater tech design is a little bit of a different animal than acting and, and um, musical theater because it's designing props, um, lighting, sound, costume, and the whole environment of the stage. So as you are working on plays in your schools, you must save all your work from the sets so you have some options. Be sure to take pictures from those sets. Save any physical items you've designed and focus on your area of study, but show all experience. So if you're a costume designer, focus on that, but show that you could also design props and also maybe even do some lighting, but be organized. Practice talking about your work and interviewing. This is very important because you will be expected, all artists are expected to talk about their work. So you really have to learn how to be comfortable about it and know what you wanna say. Be yourself, try to be confident, really practice it. Come prepared, know what each school wants you to bring. A number of examples, the format of the interview be prepared with and who will you be interviewed with. 
So with theater audition tips, you should choose material that's sub uh, suitable for your age, okay? So, and you can most relate to. Memorize your selection and be familiar with the entire play and the context of your selection of choosing a monologue from that book of monologues. Select a monologue that allows you to speak directly to the another person and you should only play one character. And sign up for and plan out your audition and interview dates as early as possible. So as soon as you clear that pre-screen, you need to sign up for that audition as soon as possible because you could end up on a wait list. They go pretty fast. Come prepared, rehearse your monologue, know what each school wants you to bring, and the format of how they're going to do the audition and the interview. Do your warm up before it's time for you to audition. And this could be if it's a virtual audition, you'll you know, do that at home. And then if it's going to be held again um, in person, where hopefully we can go back to that, then definitely you'll get time to warm up. Breathe, don't rush, and do what you need to do to feel calm and centered and comfortable in your space. Your nerves will get in the way of sharing your best work. So these are some valuable resources that um, you should definitely access. So um, when I was talking about those NASAD schools uh, for design and um, art and design, they go to National Portfolio Day. Only NASAD schools are, um, can go to Portfolio Day and participate in it. Um, you go to this website, www.portfolioday.net. I will tell you for California, Los Angeles, Southern California area, it's going to be on November 7th. Uh, at from 12 to 4 p.m. And it's going to be at the Weston Downtown Hotel in San Diego. So go to that website and register for that. These portfolio days are priceless. There will be a lot of schools there, NASA accredited schools, and they will give you 15 minutes of their time while they'll look through your portfolio and give you some feedback, um, get to know you. And um, it's really a priceless meeting. And then there are the NACAC PVA college fairs, which are the biggest uh, P, uh, performing and visual art fairs that you could, you could access and go to. Um, unfortunately, we did not have one last year because of COVID. And um, I guess they thought they couldn't really do it virtually well. Not sure about this year. I don't think it's gonna happen this year, but you can go to that website and see because I would have known about it by now. It usually happens in October and it usually happens in um, San Diego and they usually have one in Los Angeles. And then for all of our um, actors out there, musical theater, uh, the unified auditions. Uh, the unified auditions usually happen the second week of February. They're for LA, they're right now, for Southern California, LA, they're right by the airport, um, but I'm not sure if they're happening this year. We will see if things um, taper off and stay well, then hopefully we'll be able to audition in person again. So I'm gonna open this up for questions right now and stop sharing. There is my email. If you wanna take a picture of it and reach out to me, um, I'm going to stop sharing and look in the chat at this point. All right. Okay, so do we have any questions from the chat, Carlos? Or anybody who would like to ask me a question, you can unmute yourself. Is the deadlines for each portfolio different? Great question, Celine. Yes, um, they're all different. Some want earlier and they might be tied into a scholarship. So that's a great question and that's always gonna be on their website. Okay, any other questions? When math grades aren't the best, how is that viewed as a performing arts student? It's not really considered. Um, unless you're going into like an architecture path, which can be STEM focused, 
art of uh, math grades are going to be, I mean, you don't want to be um, getting D's in math. Um, it might it might hurt your GPA, especially if they are looking at GPA. However, what we're looking for when we're looking at art students is we're looking at there are classes that they've taken and do they have some college prep in there? But um, it is really more about the talent here. Unless you're going for that BA degree that I talked about in the beginning. But if you're going for that BFA or that BM, it usually is not considered. Um, can you explain Portfolio Day again? Portfolio Day, is a, it's, it's like a college fair for portfolios. That's exactly what it is. You enter a room and you'll see all of your art colleges there and universities with art schools in it. And then you go up to the table, you gather information, and then you have an actual review of your portfolio. What should a stage manager bring as examples of an application portfolio? Aiden, that's a great question. So what we want our stage managers to bring is, a, um, is more of like a dossier or a notebook um, and showing all of the stage productions um, that they've worked on, you know, um, where you know, their notes from each stage production. And usually those are sent in ahead of time. And then it's followed up with an interview with the stage management director. Um, any resources for grants and scholarships? Of course there are. In every college you're going to look at, you need to ask that question. Um, grants are usually given with um, through the FAFSA. And if it's a private school, CSS profile. But there's also portfolio scholarships. But there is a website um, that you can access right now. It's called raise.me. There's a lot of schools on there and you can actually um, earn micro scholarships to a lot of universities and colleges. Uh, what, would it be a better chance of getting into a college if you show them your portfolio, portfolio day? That is a very good question, Celine. Um, there's something called demonstrated interest. And when you go to that portfolio day and they remember who you are when they look at your portfolio afterwards, it's usually noted. Um, I actually read for the College of Visual Performing Arts and it is usually noted in there that that student attended portfolio day. That shows that student was very interested in us and took the time to follow our tips for their portfolio. So that is a very good question, Celine. Um, any other questions here? Some really good ones. Okay, are there prerequisites for this? Are the prerequisites the same for an art school as a UC school? Two years of foreign language algebra. I would say no, you need to look at each art school individually. UC schools go by a certain set of prerequisites. Art schools are going to be looking at the art supplement, the portfolio. Um, if a UC school has a BFA path or a Bachelor of Music path, they are going to look at that first in addition to all of those academic requirements. So each school has different requirements, and you could find that on the website. But if you're looking at a school like Syracuse University um, that has a College of Visual and Performing Arts, we do look for at least two years of a language, and we'll look for at least two to three years of math. And... Uh, we want to see four years of art in there. That's, uh, and if you don't have art at your school, if you can access it outside your school as well, because we want to see that passion. Good question, Jolie. Okay, any more questions here? When schools, when schools are looking at portfolios, is photography a good choice to include? Depending on your major, Gwendolyn, if you are going to have a photography major, then obviously you want to put all photography in there. But if you're going to be digital, you might want to put a mix of digital and photography and even some drawings. Um, if you're just going to have a BFA studio arts degree, then you want to see a mixture of everything that you do um, and that shows your process. So definitely, if photography is something that you love to do, but you also love to draw, then you should put those in there. And again, look at the uh, school's website and talk to the admissions counselor as well. 
when are or where is the portfolio of Native California? So Celine, it is going to be in San Diego on November 7th from 12 to four at the Westin in downtown. And you need to go to that Portfolio Day website and you can register for it. And it's good to register beforehand. If you can't, that's fine, but you'll find out um, you know, all the times, but it is November 7th, 12 to four at the downtown Westin in San Diego. I'm actually going to be there. I'll be there with the College of Visual Performing Arts for Syracuse University. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, if there's no other questions, um, please reach out to me. Um, hopefully you scanned the uh, code if you want to learn more about Syracuse University. I mean, I could share that again with you if you'd like. Let me see, I'll share that again. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see if I could share this. Are you able to see this? That QR code is a QR code special for this presentation tonight. If you'd like to know anything more about the Syracuse University and when you're choosing majors, put the art major in there or the College of Visual Performing Art um, for um, any of the drama, the music or the visual. And so thank you so much. I'm. Uh, Get a little disappointed that you can't see me in person here, but we really didn't want to lose the connection. So again, my name is Janet Recchia, and I maybe hope to be meeting some of you in soon in person. Thank you so much.